Okay, so the second step of the solar project development process is the permitting process. This step takes a decent amount of time and there is a good amount of information out there online about it. So I'm gonna keep this video at a more overview level. The biggest thing that will affect your permitting timeline is whether you're building on public land or private land. Now I mentioned in my last video that building on private land is generally quicker and easier. And hopefully at the end of this video, you'll have a better idea of exactly why that is. All right, let's start with public land. Most public land in the US is owned by the Bureau of Land Management or the US Forest Service. There's also a lot of land owned by like the National Park Service or the uh, US Fish and Wildlife Service. But if you if you found land for a solar farm, you're probably going to be dealing with the Bureau of Land Management <clears throat> or BLM or the US Forest Service. And if you're using one, if you if you have to go through one of these organizations, you're going to have to submit a right of way application to get the land. All right, so you found land where you want to build the solar farm, and it's owned by the Bureau of Land Management. What do you do? You have to submit a right of way application, and there are five steps to that process. The first step is to just uh, submit your application. The second step is to then send over your plan of development, and then the third step involves NEPA and can take two to four years. What is NEPA? NEPA is the National Environmental Policy Act, and it was basically designed to assess any environmental impacts a proposed development will have, you know, a solar farm, wind farm, natural gas plant, uh, anything along those lines. And the most common thing coming from NEPA for solar farms is something called an environmental assessment. Now the environmental assessment will look at things like soil, uh, ground and surface water, endangered species, all that stuff, and it will ultimately determine whether an environmental impact statement, or EIS, is needed, and those can be very, well, they are. Those are very long and costly processes. The fourth step is the record of decision, and that is when you find out whether your application was granted or denied, and if it was granted, then you will receive, receive a, a notice to perceive from the Bureau of Land Management, or NTP for short, and then you could finally start construction on your solar farm. And finally, the last step is that you have to pay an annual fee, an annual rent fee to the Bureau of Land Management for how many acres of land your solar farm is taking up and how many megawatts it is actually producing. Okay, so that's the process for public land. And for private land, once you found private land that you want to build your solar farm on, before you purchase it or lease it out from the landowner, you are going to want to perform a, if you're a good developer, you won't, you're going to want to perform a due diligence review. A due diligence review includes getting a title opinion, performing an on-site inspection, performing an environmental assessment, um, doing a survey, and getting a zoning opinion. If you heard that I said environmental assessment and the due diligence review, you would be correct. That So that's required for public or private land. But the thing is, is that private land has usually already been disturbed or it's already been developed on. Uh, so it's much less likely to result in some huge uh, environmental impact statement. All right, the last thing I'll mention is that there is also an energy facility permit to be aware of. Now, depending on the size of how big your solar farm is, you're going to have to be approved for this permit as well. It's the same thing as building a giant nuclear reactor a power plant, it's, that qualifies as an energy facility. If it's just some rooftop solar in your backyard, you wouldn't, this wouldn't apply. But for a utility scale solar farm, you would have to get approved for an energy facility permit. I won't go into too much detail here because it varies from state to state, but most states require an approval from the, from the State Public Utilities Commission or some similar agency. And that is pretty much a general overview of the permitting process for solar project development. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, if you have any comments, just leave them below. My next video will be about uh, power purchase agreements.